All right, hello everybody. My name is David. Uh, here's another Verilog video that I'm using an FPGA. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is basically just do an LED blink, a simple LED blink for one hertz. So what it'll involve is um, creating a, a Verilog file um, that will convert basically the 100 megahertz signal that's generated by this board into a 1 hertz signal and then we'll tie that signal into an LED. Um, so without further ado, I'll head over to Vivado and we'll start coding that. All right, so here I am in Vivado. I've created a project called LED underscore blink underscore one hertz. Um, and so, and uh, assigned it to the basis three board. You can see over here. Now, what we're gonna do is click on this plus. I mean, you can't see the pop-up window. You will on your own machine, but add or create design sources. Click next. Then we'll create a file, and we'll, I'm going to name this one as an O-N-E Hertz Generator. You'll see the name here in a second. <clears throat> so we'll wait for it to update. It's creating the file, adding the source. You'll see it up here. Oh, just... I'm not going to set, I'll set the inputs and outputs up in the file. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have our design sources. We have one. Let's open that. There it is, one hertz generator dot V. And we'll start coding the one hertz generator. So what we're going to have is we're going to have an input of a clock that is 100 megahertz this is the 100 megahertz clock that is generated on the basis 3 board okay and what we want is an output of 1 hertz so there's a few different ways that you can do this um, let's see I'm gonna stop this video and check on something and I'll be and I'll pick it back up Okay, got it. Um, so we're going to make this reg, so I don't have to make it its own reg. Um, we're going to need to count <coughs> to half of the 100 megahertz, so at least 50 megahertz. So we need 26 bits for that, and we'll call this the uh, counter reg. Now, how you can find out how many bits you need is go to your calculator and then take two and raise it to the 26 and you can see it's 67 point something megahertz, which will cover our 50 megahertz. So then we'll come down here and then always at that pause edge clock of 100 megahertz we are going to say if um counter underscore reg equals now we don't need 50 because we need 49 999,999 because we start our counting at zero and we need the begin and end surrounding here because we're going to do two things inside this if condition so once it gets to that we're going to take that reg and we're going to set it back to zero and then we're also going to take our clock one hertz you know what I'm going to have to probably put in a reset signal here. No. What I'll do is I'll just take this out and I'll come down here and I'll create another register called um, 
call I'll just call it the clock out reg right and I'll set it because you can set these equal you can start a register off equal to something but not if not if it's the output I don't think I don't want to mess with that so now I'll just come under here and do clock out underscore reg um, will become clock out underscore reg oops it'll become not so there we go one second okay so we don't need a reset but what we do need is this else condition down here else and we want the counter reg to count up plus one and then down here we will assign clock one hertz equal to the clock out reg and let me maximize this so you can see the whole thing so once again we'll go through we have the input clock that's 100 megahertz the output clock is one hertz we need a register that can that can count at least up to half of this clock here which is 50 mega um, and then here's a, a register we're going to toggle so um, we actually need to we count we start counting at zero so from zero to 49 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine is the same as counting from one to fifty million so and what we'll do is once we get to that value in the counter we will reset the counter reg to zero and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and initialize it to zero here as well uh, and then we'll toggle the clock out reg so half of every half of the 100 megahertz this signal is going to toggle so for half of that time it'll be off and for half of the time it'll be on and so we basically created a, a one hertz signal with a 50 percent duty cycle um, any other time the register is going to increment so it's going to keep counting until it gets to here then it's going to reset and it's going to toggle and then we're just going to tie in our output which is a wire that's being driven by this register here all right now that we have our module we need to go up here um, click the add sources and this time we're going to add or create constraints you can't see the window but you just click ok click on a file i'll name it constraints or const or one hertz generator click ok finish and you'll see it show up over here under constraints so here's the xdc file which is xilinx design constraints file we'll double click on that it'll open in the editor here now you won't see this but i gotta go through my computer and in yours wherever you have your master xdc file for your fpga stored and what we're going to need is just is we're gonna well we're gonna need two things we're gonna need the clock signal and i'll bring it in there so that's what the clock signal looks like for the basis three in its xdc file and i'm going to need an led so i'm gonna grab one somewhere in the middle of the road so i'll just grab led seven and there we go now what i need to do is change the names this is my input so this name needs to match my input it's already there this is my output so this needs to match my output name and which is clock underscore one hertz so i can just take this out see okay underscore one hertz oh that's not supposed to be there take that out take that out all right now we have we have everything set up so now what i'll do is i'll go down here 
and I could go run synthesis, wait for that to end, then run implementation, wait for that to end, and then click on generate bitstream. But if you just click on generate bitstream, it'll go through all these steps and then get to the bitstream and actually do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and I'll see you back when the bitstream is generated. Okay, I'm back. The bitstream is complete. You see up here, right bitstream complete. And implementation, implementation and synthesis have both been checked off down here. So now our next step is to open the hardware manager. Um, and if you haven't already done so, now's the time to plug in your basis 3 board and then uh, using your USB cable and then switch it on. There is another way you can program this. Um, you can go into the settings and have it generate a raw bit file and then have that and then transfer that bit file onto a thumb drive and then plug the thumb drive into your basis 3. Um, you have to make sure that you there's a jumper on the basis 3. I'll show you in a minute. I used to have to do that because for some reason my version of Vivado would not connect to the board. But So I got a newer version that actually connects to the board. And now we're going to open the target and auto connect. And you'll see it connect to the board. I think it was um, like 2019 version. It was around the time where they started bringing in Vitus. Uh, versus their old SDK software development kit, and it just wouldn't connect. So I used to have to generate the raw bit streams. All right, so now I'm going to program the device. Another window pops up, just hit program, and it's programmed. And I will switch over to the camera to show you. Okay, here we are switched over to now you can see the basis three and you can see that LED number seven right there is Blinking at a one Hertz rate So it's on for half a second off for half a second Now you know how to create a one Hertz signal you can take that signal and you can make clocks with it um, or anything else that ha that you need a one hertz signal for the application. I mean, I always think of clocks. I've done a lot of clocks. Um, but here I'll show you what I was talking about. Um, if you need, to, if you can, you can program this thing through USB. You would put your raw bit file, plug it in here, and then this blue jumper over here. It says um, like QSP. I can't really read it. JTAG. It's in the JTAG mode now, which is through the USB but if you move this jumper over here uh, it'll be in the USB mode and when you plug your USB you'll still need to power the board and then you hit this red program button over here and it'll actually program the bitstream into the board but since Vivado connects to the board using the hardware manager I no longer need to do that um, but hey here's our one Hertz generator on the basis 3 it's complete and working. Uh, thanks for watching.